Hello and welcome to this episode of Simulation TV, Simulation in Action. It will be a Simulation Mold Flow Cool BEM Overview. My name is Sean Gedman and I'll take you through the presentation. So a quick problem description we're going to go over is our exercise is basically going to take a look at setting up and running a cool BEM analysis. BEM simply stands for uh, the solver method that we'll be using, which in this case is a boundary element method. Some key learning objectives that we want to take away will be, uh, of course, we're going to cover an overview of it. We're going to model some cooling layouts using a few methods, the manual method and, some, and a wizard. We'll also review some of the key process settings and key results and a few tips to help you along your way. So, you know, you may ask yourself first, why run cooling? Well, two big reasons for that. Of course, it affects your quality. You know, it can affect your surface finish, uh, affect your residual stresses, the crystallinity, and even your final deflection of the part. So definitely important from a quality standpoint as well as a cost standpoint. So this can also help us optimize our cycle time and of course avoid any complex cooling layouts that we may not necessarily need to achieve our, our desired part. So a few cooling entities that you'll typically work with when modeling a cooling analysis will be a channel which is uh, a cooling line essentially, your bubblers, baffles, and a hose which is essentially the same as a, a cooling channel but it will neglect heat transfer. It will only consider your, your pressure drop or taking pressure into consideration there. So, you know, of course, you'd run these outside of the mold maybe to connect some of your circuits in, in reality. So there are two main types of cooling analyses that we'll cover or that you have an option for in the cool BEM solver. One will be a specified analysis, and what this is going to do is you're going to define the cycle time you're going to specify a mold temp and that's going to be used as, as the initial condition there and you're going to use this to essentially optimize your cooling layout or replicate a current process that you are using on the shop floor. Um, the second option will be automatic and what this is going to do is you're going to give the solver some parameters to meet mainly a target mold temperature and it's going to uh, try to achieve that temperature and, and in a cycle time. So beyond that, what you really want to do when using the automatic solver is really have your layout optimized first. And then what this can help us do is to, to then shorten our cycle time or optimize that aspect of the cool analysis. So a general procedure that we'll go through typically when you're trying to optimize your cooling is You'll first want to define your objectives for the analysis. What, what is acceptable for your analysis? And what are you trying to achieve? <clears throat> From there, you're gonna model your cooling components. You'll set some cooling parameters. You'll run the cooling analysis. And then you'll ask yourself, is my cooling analysis optimized or not? If the answer is yes, then we're done. If the answer is no, then we want to take a look at our setup, our, our cooling design, and see what we need to revise. Do we need to look at the design itself? Do we need to adjust the coolant temperature or flow rates uh, with the coolant we're using? Do we need to uh, maybe visit the possibility of using some uh, strategically placed high conductive inserts? Or do we just need to adjust our cycle time to give it a little more time to cool? And then once you've revisited that or revised your layout, you'd come back up and evaluate your cooling parameters and run through this process again. And hopefully you would achieve what end result you're looking for. So a few useful tips that we'll take a look at when going through a cooling analysis. We want to keep these in mind, of course, is that L over D ratios, uh, this is particularly important for the cool BEM analysis. This is the cooling channels only, of course, where 
you want to make sure that the L over D ratio is 2.5 to 1 or greater. And what this means is if you take your diameter, you want that diam the length of that beam to be 2.5 times or more the diameter in length. So that will ensure you don't have some real low aspect ratio beams. If you do, this is, of course, there may be exceptions to this rule, and that's fine. It's just you don't want to have a real low L over D ratio, or else you'll typically run into some convergence issues in your cooling analysis. Your circuit outlet temperature, we want to try to maintain that uh, between 2 and 3 degrees Celsius difference between the inlet and outlet temperatures. If you're going beyond this range, then you know maybe we need to reevaluate your cooling layout, your cooling design. It might not be adequate enough to cool your, your part. Um, the inlet, coolant inlet, typically we'll target that at 10 to 30 degrees Celsius below your mold temperature that you're shooting for because really um, you need to have a cooler inlet in order to achieve the mold temperature. You can't have a, a, an inlet or a, run a coolant through your mold that's warmer than the target you're trying to achieve. It just won't work. Um, and then of course minimize mold surface temperature variation for amorphous materials. Try to keep this between plus or 10, plus or minus 10 degrees Celsius. For semi-crystalline or crystalline, we try to keep it plus or minus five degrees Celsius. So from here, we'll go into our demo. All right, now that we have our part up, what we're going to do is go through a few exercises here just to show you a, a brief intro and not only how to set up your cooling analysis, but also take a look at some of the key results. So first thing we'll look at is, of course, modeling and the wizard it's, it's a very interesting tool or a very good tool for some basic modeling or help with your layout. So to use this, we can either go into geometry and we can come here to our cooling circuit and that will help us out or bring up the wizard. Another option would be if we come down here and double click. What this will do is bring up our wizard. We're gonna specify a few values, you know, what is the diameter we'd like to use how far above and below the part we want these to be placed. And then of course, would you want them to be oriented in the X or the Y direction? Once we make these selections, we'll move on to our second and final screen, which is gonna ask us how many channels we want. So we can do, let's say two maybe instead of one. And anytime during this process, you can hit the preview button It'll update the image to give you a rough idea what's going on or what this is going to look like. Of course, distance between those channels, we can change that. And distance beyond the part, that might be a bit much, so we'll go 50. Hit the preview button, and you can see that's updated for us. Now we hit the finish button, and you'll see our layout is complete. It added the inlets for us and everything. So this is a, a good tool for, um, you know, like I said, some standard or very basic cooling layouts that you can use. You can modify these as well if you wish. Uh, any aspects of this, you can add to it, you can delete, or you can even uh, modify your inlets if you wish by clicking right-click properties and adjust your coolant, your coolant control, so on and so forth. second method that you'd use would be a, a manual procedure and to do this what we typically do is start out with some curves and from those curves we would mesh them so you can see I have some curves meshed here or model for us already I come up to here create a line and what I like to do is typically specify my property ahead of time so I have a property in here already that I'm using on these other curves but if you don't you can select a new one if you wish but I have that here and what we're going to do is click my nodes hit apply and you see we have our line. 
So from this point, what we would do is come in here, back to our home screen, mesh, generate mesh, and specify a global edge length we want to use here. Now, during this portion of the uh, procedure, we want to make sure we have our other surfaces turned off or anything we don't want to mesh not displayed on the screen. And you can do that down here in the layers. Just turn everything off because typically whatever you have on the screen, it's the, the software is going to assume you would like that meshed and do so. So again, keeping in mind our 2.5 to 1 L over D ratio, I'm going to use uh, 25 millimeters since the diameter of this is 5 millimeter. It gives us a 5 to 1 way within acceptable um, there. And what you can do is preview, get an idea, and if you like what you see, we can mesh it. You can see that was pretty quick to complete. From this point, all we really have to do is come in and assign our inlets. And to do that, we'll come to our Home tab, Boundary Conditions, Coolant Inlets. Now here you'd edit anything you want to. If you wanted to change this, the default pure water, 25C. If you wanted to change any of that, then you could do so at this time. And then just click the note on the end of your circuit, and that's, that's it. So at this point, you have your layout. You have it modeled, whether you use the wizard or whether you use the manual procedure. Um, and we want to take a look at some of our process settings now, and also the specified analyses versus the auto analyses. So specified, you have cool, you have your cooling analysis set. We'll go into our process settings, and you can see we have a melt temp specified, and then what we would call an IPC time or your injection pack cooling time. So this is going to be 20 seconds for us. And then you would run this analysis and get your results. For the automatic analysis, this is going to give you, um, it's, it's going about the same method of uh, solving the equation essentially, only what you're doing is you're giving the solver a little more leniency or we're trying to optimize it at this time. So I did the specified analysis and typically what I do there is take a look at some of those plots like I mentioned the uh, mold temperature or temperature mold. And we take a look at our range. Now you want to be careful here because if your runner system is is clear, you could see it adjusted the scale, your runner is typically going to be pretty warm. So um, if that's not a concern, we can just isolate on the part here, or zoom in and isolate it and take a look at our range here. You can see um, ab almost five degrees. So we're pretty good since this is a, a crystalline material. We're, we're okay here. Um, if I wanted to optimize that a little more, maybe cool this part in the center a little better. Now would be my time to uh, adjust this, play with this, and see what I could do to better this analysis or this cooling layout. The other thing you'll want to look at is take a look in your logs. And you'll see there will be several parameters here. But the one that I'm typically interested in will be the cavity surface temperature average. You can see where right here. Right now, a little over 29 degrees Celsius. My target mold temperature is going to be 40 Celsius, so well below what our target is, which would be a good uh, indication. I have my range, and I also have my, uh, my average mold temperature is below what my target is. So this is a good time to go to the automatic analysis, which will help me optimize. Some other things that you might want to consider before doing that step would be just taking a look at some of your inlet things. So as I mentioned, flow rate, we can look at flow rate, 
get an idea if our uh, thermolator can handle this. Can we achieve this flow rate? You could look at the Reynolds number to make sure that we're hitting the, you know, 10,000 to get that optimum turbulent flow there. You could take a look at your circuit temperatures as well. Again, you want to see if your inlet is about two to three degrees Celsius or not more than two to three degrees Celsius cooler than your outlet. And if you pass and all these things look good for, to you, then we can go on the automatic. And in here, really the only difference from before is that we're going to set this to automatic rather than specified. Now when you're doing this, you can see we have a couple criteria here. One is my mold surface temp, which is 40. And then there's also an ejection temperature and a part percentage at ejection temperature that we're going to use to uh, get our results. So what I do is run this analysis. And one thing if we take a look back here is that our cycle time was roughly 25 seconds is what we were getting. So when I ran the automatic analysis, we'll take a look at our logs. And if we look at the bottom, the automatic analysis says that we can hit that in about 12 seconds. So, you know, we optimize our cooling layout, make sure we we did most of the work in the specified analysis, and then we moved over the automatic analysis to, um, to optimize our cycle time for us. And at this point, as long as your deflection and everything looks adequate to you, and we're meeting your requirements, then you should be complete here. Hopefully, if you learned something during this episode of SimTV, thanks for watching.